Hallo. Um, okay, it's this situation with the screen. Ha, huh. yeah. Um, this is a talk about reasons on why we LARP. And I think there are as many reasons as there are players. And many different reasons can be active at the same time. This means that I, as a game designer, can never fully control what motivates a player. However, I can set different frames that might invite certain reactions more than others. I just tried out one such frame on you and I call it the what the fuck feeling. Uh, the, I made the frame with scenography. And uh, maybe some of you felt that you um, were wondering what was going on when you came in here. Uh, and maybe some of you felt a curious confusion that could have motivated you to stay in that situation with me. Um, to keep the focus and share something. I think that that feeling could have been a useful mot motor in a game about maybe wonders or dreams or insecurity. Uh, and uh, we could have explored that for the whole uh, 15 minutes now, but I'm going to run through a, a number of different frames or motors for uh, LARPing. And uh, now I would like you to take a closer look at the W in what? You see it there. Uh, look at the shape, follow the first line of the letter until it crosses the next. Look at the points where the lines meet and now close your eyes. Take a deep breath, keep breathing. In imagine the W, keep imagining it. And now open your eyes. Okay. Uh, what I did now was to try and incite another reason to want to LARP, which I would call clear tasks. Maybe not all of you followed my instructions, but those of you who did must have fun found some kind of curiosity and trust that gave you pleasure enough to close your eyes. And I think many of us can feel that it is restful to be offered um, a clear task for a while as long as there is a solid trust in whoever takes the lead. Uh, and in this case, I also used your trust to play a very small trick on you by changing the slide. Uh, and this trick also gave some kind of meaning on why you would close your eyes. I believe if you want to keep people motivated to perform clear tasks, you have to work a lot with both trust and meaning creation. Since we have a very short time together, uh, today I will, I will give you a lot of clear tasks while also presenting other reasons to LARP. Um, and if there is something I instruct you to do that you don't want to do, just skip it. It's fine to say no and you don't have to explain why. Um, now I would like you to turn to a neighbor close to you. So you couple up and if there are three somewhere that's also fine. Uh, but uh, one of you hold out a hand so that the other one can see the poem. Uh, and the other one, uh, you can gently take the hand uh, and uh, look at the lines there in the hand. Focus on that. Uh, what can you see inside the hand? And. Uh, uh, now, just say three words to the other one about what you see inside the hand. And uh, you can change, change partners and do the same again. And if there's someone who, uh, who hasn't got the partner who is a three, you can also describe one hand sim together. Thank 
you. Um, I know I might in, uh, interrupt someone who started an interesting conversation now. But uh, I changed slides and the one that I put here now is intimacy. And uh, it's a complex notion, but it means what is innermost, something on the inside. Uh, it's not necessarily a feeling of closeness, but it's about sharing something that you don't usually share with someone else or with yourself. Uh, thus to hold hands and uh, telling someone what you feel about or see in that hand can be an intimate experience depending on how often you do it, in what context and so on. And um, I, I did this small experiment just to give you a small taste of uh, something that intimacy could mean for me. Uh, and for me personally, this is one of my strongest player motivations. Uh, LARPs that can allow me to discover something in myself and others uh, that I'm not often allowed to explore otherwise are super interesting for me. Um, to be intimate is... Uh, well, it can be comfortable, it can be uncomfortable, but it is very rarely without risk. So to work with intimacy as a player motivation is something that demands a bit of extra thought and care about safety, which I will not speak about now. Uh, oh, I will speak about renegotiating reality. Um, and... Uh, I think one of the reasons why playing with intimacy is risky uh, and sometimes even more risky than playing with swords uh, is because it has the capacity of renegotiating the rules of reality. When you fight with swords in a game, it has very little to do with real fighting, but when you touch someone's hand, you do it for real, also when you do it in a game as your character. And in this case, uh, I mean, it's, it's the case with many things, uh, also things that are not about intimate touch. Uh, and that means that through games we can create situations that will give effects on what we are capable of imagining uh, of ourselves and the world. Some games have this as an explicit purpose. Uh, I want to mention, for example, the theatre director Augusto Boal, uh, when a military regime gained power in Brazil, Boal and his colleagues had problems making public shows anymore. So they started to make what they called invisible theater. Uh, they would pretend to be ordinary people and stage everyday situations in the metro, on the square and so on, that uh, led to political discussions with whoever was around. This was their way of setting a frame for renegotiating what could be said and done in their reality. And uh, that also has a connection to what I would call inventing together. Uh, I mentioned here storytelling, exploring a world or fiction, discovering a character, and I would like you to invent with me. So uh, if we were not here and now in ourselves, where and who would we be? Just some suggestion. Uh, in the jungle, okay. Wh who are? Okay, but we already went for jungle. What are we inside the jungle? Who are we? Adventurers. We are adventurers in the jungle. Okay, and uh, w why are we here together? We're finding the big diamond called Guga Guga Bingangango. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so we're making plans for that. Cool. Uh, th that went very quickly. Like already we invented some kind of scenario and um, now I'm sorry we're back at the LARP Writer Summer School <laughs> lecture and uh, um, but this this kind of inventing is a strong reason to LARP I think. Um, I know that this uh, space, the, these uh, small cabins uh, were actually once a summer holiday location for well-promoted Soviet workers. What if we all had a clear personal relation to Soviet? How would it then be to gather here and LARP that we were our own ancestors or people who knew them? 
How could that change or deepen our understanding of both the Soviet times and how we became what we are in the present? I think if we did something like that, uh, we would have a different kind of interest in our collective storytelling than if we were just inventing things together. Uh, and I also choose this example to show what a distant fan what, that what is a distant fantasy for someone uh, can be a very serious reality for another player, uh, because I imagine that there are many different relations to Soviet times just in this room. Um, and uh, if we were all in the same uh, Soviet LARP, uh, some collisions of interest could appear. Imagine, for example, what would happen if a person with a very traumatic and complex relation to Soviet times meets this player. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't know who she is, but it seems like she feels kind of hot and cool in her outfit. Uh, I'm like a superstar or a superhero, she owns the world. Uh, and I would say that to dress up your very best and Im imagine yourself on top of the world, larger than life, playing with power symbols in different ways, uh, to get turned on or high on your character. That is what I would call power fantasies. And I think we all have them. They can be very enjoyable, but we generally don't have the same power fantasies. And despite the feeling of omnipotence, like uh, almightiness, uh, that might come with them, uh, one actually can't force anyone to play along in one's own power fantasy. So before you put on this fluffy he hero hat, uh, you, maybe you want to make a mental note. This is my fantasy, not anyone else's, and I'm still responsible for what I do. If people want to talk to me about that red star, I better listen. Uh, and uh, now I just want us to play a rock, paper, scissors once. Uh, all of you against me. Uh, and it goes like, like this, uh, one, two, and on the third you show. Okay. Uh, one, One, two, two three. three. Okay, all all uh, bags. Hold up your hands. Okay. Papers. Ah, oh, that's that papers. Yeah, <laughs> the Swedish uh, scissors and um, rocks. I I think uh, scissors was you won. Scissors won against me. Uh, and yeah, th that was my example of a small competition. Uh, I wanted to uh, mention that last reason to LARP because I think it's very present in many game cultures, though it's far from obligatory to make a competitive element. Uh, and uh, LARP, as you learned yesterday, has a connection to board games and other clearly competitive <coughs> oriented activities. So there are very many inspirational sources if you want to make that kind of design. Uh, there are texts and other tips that you can find. So I'm not going to deepen this so much. Just mention chance, which I think this uh, paper, scissor, rock thing is, or comparing skills like uh, arm pullers, or endurance, like uh, how many hours can I walk through the desert, or uh, plotting, like using the social arena as a field of uh, competition. Um, yeah. Why do you LARP? I, I hope that uh, this talk gave you some thoughts about what usually gets you going as a player. And I also hope that this talk gave you ideas of other motivations that you would like to be strong in your future games. Uh, I hope that this talk also gave you some ideas on how you as a game designer can communicate your desires when you have very little means to do it. No long participant letters, no home page, very short time, etc. Because I think I managed to do this with you now, making you participate in no less than five small games in under 15 minutes. Uh, and I also hope that you come up with a lot of things that I have not thought of and that you come to talk with me when you do, so that I can learn from you. Thank you.